Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Shock. I'm Corey and that is the most off-road capable Chevy Silverado you can buy straight from the factory. That is the 2023 Chevy Silverado ZR2 AEV Bison. Yes, big name. Collaboration with American Expedition Vehicles making this Bison. It takes the ZR2 up a notch. And I've heard it said that many customers will buy a vehicle that they need or want for very few opportunities every single year. This being the most off-road capable pickup truck, in this video, I'm gonna explore what this one is like to live with on the road when you get off-road capability like you see back behind me. Stay tuned. All right, gearheads, yes, I am at beautiful Barnwell Mountain Recreation Area where I will be filming today, showing you exactly what this thing is capable of off-road. But this video is really about what this vehicle is like to live with daily. I've put over 200 miles on this exact truck in my daily life. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a little bit of what it's like to live with. But first, I wanna give you a few basics of this pickup truck starting with under the hood. I will say while I've got the hood open uh, that Chevy did deliver this to me to review for you for a full week and I've been enjoying my time with it thus far. So got the hood popped. There are two powertrain choices for the ZR2 Bison. This is the 6.2 liter V8 engine mated to a 10 speed automatic. It makes 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. You can get that three liter baby Duramax diesel engine that we had in the Trail Boss the last time we were out here and it is an inline six-cylinder also mated to that 10-speed automatic. Automatic. It makes 305 horsepower but 495 pound-feet of torque. I'm a little biased. I really enjoyed that engine while we had it and I think that would be the one that I would pick over this 6.2 liter and we'll get into fuel economy and stuff when I'm actually driving it. But if you remember, I did actually have a ZR2 last fall when I was in LA for the LA Auto Show. And this AEV Bison version takes things up a notch from that. So yes, while I was in California, I did not get to offer that one either. That was mostly an on-road test. Uh, that's what this video will be, but I do wanna give you just a quick uh, sneak peek into what this thing brings you when you go with the AEV Bison edition. So standard ZR2 stuff are the Multimatic shocks, the DSSB Multimatic shocks. You get electronic lockers front and rear and terrain mode, which allows for one pedal rock crawling. I tested that already in the Chevy Colorado. We'll see how it does here. And then you get the high clearance dual exhaust. Basically means you get turndowns instead of uh, back exit exhausts. The Bison adds stamped steel bumpers front and rear for an improved approach angle of 32.5 degrees. So I'm going to actually come around here and show you. The standard ZR2 gets 31.8 degree approach angle, so very much better improved approach angle. Your departure angle is 23.4 on this versus 23.3 on standard ZR2. You get some heavy duty recovery points that'll show you right up here and there are even more back there on the back. And a three millimeter thick steel that is both powder and E-coated. We get underbody skid plates all the way back to the transfer case. We get these 18 inch black wheels wrapped in Goodyear Wrangler uh, Territory MT tires. You can see Durawall technology, so they are uh, quite hefty and meant to take some abuse when it comes to off-roading. And uh, these are, I'm looking for the tire size on them, 275-70R18. So yeah, they are 33 inch tall tires and you can kind of see here, but you can see even better on the driver's side exactly why they don't have like 35s or anything bigger on them because uh, you really run into an issue when it comes to your turning angle. I talked about the DSSV Multimatic shocks. This is F1 style technology uh, brought to pickup truck off-roading. So that's a, a nice addition, a nice upgrade as well. 
A lot of people have mentioned this. This is just a tacked on black painted section here. It does mimic heat extractors, but yeah, this is completely fake, unfortunately. We do get some ZR2 badging here. We've got some body mounted rock sliders here. I'm gonna even bring you around back here to show you the heavy duty bump stops we have here and just the long travel we have on that DSSV Multimatic shock. This is the fuel tank and you can see the skid plate that surrounds it. This is the only uh, Silverado you can get with um, a fuel skid. So just something to take into consideration uh, if you plan on doing some serious off-roading. This one does have a proximity key, so you can just get inside like that. Do you want to show you some of the luxuries in here? So we do get a interesting door panel here. This is unique to ZR2, textured material. And then we get this yellow uh, accent stitching, all the gray and the black. I really like it. It's a unique look. And while many manufacturers are leaning very heavy into red as the accent color, on their off-road pickups. I like seeing yellow, something different. Get this carbon fiber look here. You can see, uh, in addition to them being a two-person memory seat, they are heated and ventilated. And we get that AEV uh, logo embroidered there on the headrest. Otherwise, it's pretty much standard fare for Silverado. Uh, if you have seen the ZR2 video or the Trail Boss video, you know exactly what to expect in here. I will say one feature I really like about the heated and ventilated seats, they do remember, or they are automatic. So they don't remember if you had them on or off, but they look at the exterior temperature and adjust accordingly based on your uh, interior uh, preferences on uh, your ventilation controls. Back here in the back, we do get the height of storage seat backs on the back. So you can put some extra stuff back here. They are 60-40 split folding. You don't have to pull any levers or anything like that. You do get some under or under seat storage here. That's where I've got what I wrote out here and uh, definitely had to upgrade my footwear. And you can see we do have heated outboard seats with some air vents and a USB-A and USB-C. If you wanna see what it's like putting Tucker's child seat back in the bag back here, absolutely stay tuned. Holly will get behind the wheel and we'll install that child safety seat. Coming around to the back, just look at the articulation on this thing. It's quite impressive. We get that bison sticker back here on the back to let everyone know what you've got. And then standard on ZR2 Bison is the Multiflex tailgate that has six different positions for you to access and get into the bed or be able to reach into the bed further, various different things you can do there. So that is standard on the Bison. And uh, I, at first I thought it was rather gimmicky. I've come to like it in practicality. Would I pay for it if I were getting it? Maybe, maybe not. But like I said, it is standard on this one. And then you can see we have those turned down exhausts behind that steel rear bumper to help with that departure angle and all of that. But I didn't, I did say this is not an off-road video. I just wanted to give you a quick tour of what this one looked like uh, inside and out. Now let's hop behind the wheel and see what it drives like in regular traffic. All right, setting off in the 2023 Chevy Silverado ZR2 Bison. Finally back on my home turf. You may be familiar, the last time I was behind the wheel of a Chevy Silverado ZR2, it wasn't the Bison. And I was in LA, Calabasas area. No off-road testing of that one. Much like what this video is going to be about. Uh, I'm actually on my way as I film this portion uh, to Barnwell Mountain where you saw the intro. And yes, maybe where I'll tease a little bit more of the off-road stuff. I felt that I needed to share some opinions of this pickup truck behind the wheel. Now that I got to spend some more time in it, back in Texas. It's mostly unchanged from a driving dynamics uh, from the ZR2 that I drove back in California, but I've put 235 miles on it here in Texas, and I've got some different thoughts from when I was back in California. One, first and foremost, I absolutely loved, I laughed when I first got it, but I loved having that big truck while I was in California because it was so out of place there. Uh, the 
traffic parted in front of me because I, I was so big and brawny and stood over everything else on the road. Coming back to Texas, not so much. <laughs> I'm a little more of the same with everybody else. And while yes, this truck does sit higher than some other pickup trucks that it competes against, or even against other trims of this same truck, it's a little more normal here. And so I actually drove this through downtown Dallas to the airport and back. And yes, very different driving experience uh, here in Texas. The waters did not part in front of me quite like they did in California, but this has still been a fun vehicle to drive. It is big. And when I was driving it through the parking garage at Dallas Love Field, whoo, I was stressing. This thing is tall and those roofs are low, but I made it through without any damage. So there is that. This probably wouldn't be my pick for my personal daily driver. We'll see how much that changes after I get done filming off-road today. But for a daily vehicle, this thing falls a little bit short and that's to be expected. Chevy did a lot with AEV to ensure that this thing was as off-road capable as it could possibly be. So we've got those DSSV Multimatic uh, shocks and dampers underneath. We've got uh, boron steel stamped skid plates like all the way underneath. We've got locking front and rear differentials. All of that works very well off-road, but translates into a ride here on Texas roads. Now that I've put more miles on it, that can be a bit jittery. When people complain about the ride of trucks, I, I could foresee them lumping the ride of this truck in with those. Um, it, it's not, it's not smooth, it's not posh, nor should it be. That's not what I'm expecting, but you definitely know that you are in a truck and you're not in a modern crossover SUV or sedan. I've driven a lot of those over this past weekend, uh, but yes, yeah, so you very much know you're in a truck. And, and to me, that's not a bad thing. Uh, couple that with that 6.2 liter V8 under the hood, the 10 speed automatic transmission, it's making me wish I had the optional engine for this platform. I, I don't dislike the 6.2. I love a big, loud V8, and that's what this is. And in fact, I would probably put a louder exhaust on this, and I would definitely put an intake on it. We do have those turn downs back in the back for better departure angle, but I would put louder exhaust with turn downs back there in the back. Uh, for this vehicle because I, I want to hear it if I've got a V8 and the reason I say I'm kind of longing for that three liter diesel that you can also get in this platform is from my time in that trail boss that we had a few months back that I also road trip to Dallas and also took where I'm going today to Barnwell Mountain and off-road because I am getting in 240 miles now 16 flat on the MPG rating, 16 miles per gallon, which isn't bad considering the off-road capability of this truck, the next to no aerodynamics of this brick driving down the road. It's heavy, it's big, it's not aerodynamic. And I mean, 16 compared to some of the competition, for crying out loud, the Tundra TRD Pro with its hybrid powertrain got about the same. So here I've got a big naturally aspirated V8 that is more simple and I still get my under seat storage back in the back. And I, I, I just feel this is a better, more traditional pickup truck package when it comes to powertrains. So I really like it. it it's been fine in all use cases. It's got enough power. Uh, it does have less torque than that diesel and a lower fuel economy rating. So do your research on how you drive, figure out the two that you would want or which of the two you would want. Me, I, I'm in camp baby Duramax.
that's just me after living with this one for a little bit but otherwise it is very similar to that zr2 we had in california last fall and very similar to that trail boss we had here last winter it, it I, I like it a lot this one is more upscale inside than the trail boss we had so I do get those automatic ventilated and heated seats. I get my old man heated back cushion that I like. I got those on the uh, cloth seats as well, but these leather seats that are, are very interesting with their patterns and textures and all the yellow stitching, my AEV branding in the headrest all around. It is a pretty cool package that I have enjoyed having and will enjoy having uh, when I get to my final destination today, where I'm heading right now, and that is Barnwell Mountain for a little off-road action. All right, gearheads, there you have it. A quick on-road review of what this most capable off-road Silverado is like in day-to-day -day life. If you are one of those people who are really going to be off-roading it very rarely, and you just want the appearance of off-road ability and toughness, I would say maybe don't go with this one if you don't want all those trucky like characteristics. All the off-road tech on this really make it a little bit of a beast to live with day in and day out. That is not the environment it was made for. It was made for environments just like this. Off-road, having a lot of fun with those lockers front and rear, with all that underbody protection, uh, with those upgraded wheels and tires. This thing is really happiest off-road. And as you can tell, that is actually why I'm out here today. So if you wanna see what this thing is like off-road, absolutely hit that subscribe button, follow button, ring the bell, comment, like, subscribe, all those things so that you see that off-road video when it drops later this week. And find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Everything is at GT Garage Talk, or you can just go to gtgaragetalk.com where you can read more about this and perhaps some of its competition like Tundra TRD Pro and even the Ford F-150 Raptor. At $85,000 as this one sits, you can get a Raptor for cheaper with more power and a little more comfortable ride with its Fox shocks meant for high-speed Baja off-road racing. But as for me, with the on-road review of this 2023 Chevy Silverado ZR2 Bison in partnership with AEV. Until next time, gearheads.